Hello and welcome to another Q&A video from the Reaper blog. I'm John and the YouTube channel just reached 1500 subscribers. Thank you so much for subscribing. Before we get started, I want to thank everyone that had liked, shared, subscribed, commented on the videos. It really means a lot to me. I also want to let everyone know about the tip jar on the website. It's a lot of time and effort to make these videos, so anything you can donate would be greatly appreciated. Thanks to everyone that's already donated. Okay, let's get into the questions. First question is, can you explain your setup for doing the tutorials? I use a software called ScreenFlow to do the screen capture. It lets me do the full screen, plus uh, an extra audio track, um, plus an extra video track if I need it. I can do all the editing in there. Once I started working with video for my camera, I found that I needed another piece of software that's better suited for video files. I use Adobe Premiere. The camera I use is an Olympus EPL5. It's a micro four thirds system camera. I use a Sigma 19 millimeter EXDN. This particular video is at ISO 320 and F uh, 4.5. On this side of the camera, I have a large light that I made from parts from Home Depot uh, with a couple layers of parchment paper for diffusion. On this side, I have my foil reflector. Uh, for microphones, I use a Shure SM7B when I'm doing the uh, screencasts, and uh, for the video, I use a Rode NTG2. It takes anywhere from an hour at the least to eight hours or so. The Q&A videos take a lot longer. I think the first one took eight hours, the second one took a little bit less, and hopefully this one is even faster. Next question is... How do I route separate VSTs on separate tracks to my MIDI controller? That's as simple as assigning each track a specific MIDI channel, then using the buttons on your controller to send a specific MIDI channel. Let's switch over to Reaper and I'll show you this. Let's start with inserting a couple virtual instruments. Let's take Resynth and another one and I'll just set them to different presets. All right, so if we play them together, two sounds at once. So what we need to do is set the input device to your MIDI controller, so channel one. And on the second one, go to MIDI controller, channel two. Okay. So my controller is set to channel one. I press the buttons on the keyboard to change the channel and then channel two. So once you do that, you could do loop recording and record multiple tracks without stopping the transport. So to do that, you would set this to MIDI overdub mode for both tracks. Um, and then you would set your recording mode, right click this, and time selection auto punch. Turn on cycle, and then probably make a selection from five to seven. Go back to the start and I'm going to set my controller to channel one and hit record. I'll switch to channel two. Get the idea. So without stopping, you can loop that section, record what you want. You could even go into the uh, track recording settings and set this to input quantize of like 16th note. It's just as easy as that. If only I knew how to play, I'd be all set. Next question. I'm struggling to keep my project files organized while recording an LP. Any advice? The system I like to use for organizing a larger project is to make a folder for the artist or the project album title, then make a folder for each song. Within the folder, you have your project file. You have an audio files folder. You can also save templates, effect settings, and things like that into the folder. This is our template. Go to file, save project as. I'll make a new folder, call this album title, and then this project will be song one going to create a subdirectory. Uh, if you had any files, you would want to copy them. Save. Uh, I'm going to show you my project settings and 
there's an audio files folder. I record something into this project. Hit save. Now we're going to work on the second song. I would select all of these, delete, save as, go up one level, back to the album title, song two, create a directory, save, and then and now we're recording in song two. All right, so here's that folder. And you might also want to have a folder for notes, um, photos, masters, and uh, rough mixes. That's how I like to organize larger projects. Um, I don't really recommend recording multiple songs in one project. Uh, there's pros and cons, but once you start getting past like five songs, then it's the projects are really, really big. You're going to crash a lot more even though they were recorded at the same time, they're always going to need special effects, different automation, stuff like that. And once you start automating one song, you have to automate everything for every other song in the project. And uh, it gets to be a pain. Next question, how do you change the track colors completely? When I change it, it just changes the name. Uh, by default, it looks like this. That's the default. So if you color a track, it's just the label. Now, if you use this option, Tint Track Panel Backgrounds, it colors the whole track. I find it much easier to jump around and find what you need, uh, especially if you combine that with the SWS Auto Color. And then you just have to name the track and it's automatically colored. What happens if I don't buy Reaper after 60 days and what are the differences between the licenses? The Reaper demo is uh, fully functional. It just has that nag screen. You are supposed to pay for it, but it doesn't stop working. Basically, they put it on you. Uh, if you need to use Reaper, um, you should pay the $60 license and um, feel good because you're supporting the company. Uh, if you run a recording studio, you should buy the commercial license, which is $225. There's no differences between the different licenses uh, in terms of features. Um, it's just uh, in terms of how much money you're making using Reaper. I hope I've answered your questions uh, adequately. Hope you've liked this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon in another tutorial. Bye.